So I'm one of the uh, comprehensive ophthalmologists. Whoa. Put that weight on there. So I'm one of the comprehensive ophthalmologists at the VA. And uh, I look at the VA as a privilege to take care of these patients over there. Dr. Allen certainly started and set the bar very high in regards to taking care of those patients. So it's kind of a diverse audience today. So what we thought that we would talk about is, you know, Dr. Allen touched hundreds, if not thousands of lives. And the way that he touched them is not only with how he was, but also his surgical skill and what he did. And in some of us, even myself, talking to my wife, those kind of things, we don't really explain what we do. So I thought it'd be nice if we just took a kind of look back at cataracts and cataract surgery. So first off, what is a cataract? So if you think about a cataract, really it's caught into the natural end. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, so when you think about it, a cataract is basically clawed into the natural ends. The word cataract actually comes from the Latin cataracta, which means waterfall. Because if you think about it, people in the uh, older times, prior to 1700, thought that a cataract really was caused by basically liquid material flowing through the central lens. Because what they noticed was you couldn't see in the middle, and when they looked, they saw some whitening to the lens. Cataracts and cataract surgery are really important because if you think about it, 50% of what the world's blindness is caused by cataracts. So if you can imagine kind of sitting back, back in the olden days, you look at one of your friends, you kind of see that there's central clouding. One thought process was maybe if I remove that central clouding, the patient could see better. So cataract surgery in antiquity, probably the father of cataract surgery, if you would, was an Indian surgeon named Sushruta. Back in the 6th century BC, he was the first known person in the record, basically, that thought that it would be okay to try to take the lens and push it out of the way. You can imagine kind of him sitting back at a fire with his friends, seeing someone with a cataract and saying, maybe if I take this big stick, I could push that out of the way. You can imagine, unfortunately, that while that did work, you got the, the area of clouding out of the way, it wasn't the best technique because although they saw pretty good for the short term, long term, they had lots of trouble with inflammation and sometimes even loss of the eye. There is also similar evidence in Iraq, Greece, and Egypt of a similar procedure. And that continued until about 29 AD when the thought process changed to maybe we can actually just break up that cataract so people can kind of see around it. And those procedures were called couching where it's just not breaking up the lens and taking it out, but more pushing it out of the way so that the person could see. So that kind of went on for a little bit until about 1748. So, you know, a few thousand years later, Jacques Daviel of Paris did the first extracapsular surgery. So when you think about the cataract, I always tell patients that it's kind of like an M&M. There's a candy coating, the inside of the lens, the chocolate, if you would, that's the part of the lens that needs to be removed, and that's what Dr. Daviel did. And then five years after that, the lens was removed in its entirety, very akin to common what we call extracapsular surgery, where you bring the whole lens out. The unfortunate thing about the surgery that was done in 1748 is that general anesthesia didn't begin until the 1840s. So this is a depiction of what the surgery was like. They basically, unfortunately, had to tie down the patient. And unfortunately, lots of the descriptions are they also needed a second very large gentleman to hold the patient down. So getting there, kind of getting to the point of getting out the lens, but unfortunately not very comfortable. It took a long time, still high risk of complications. And if you also think about it, cataract surgery is twofold. It's not just taking out the area where you can't see. It's also putting something in front of the eye, inside the eye, so that you can actually see well. So in other words, a lens, just like glasses. So these are the more recent kind of milestones in cataract surgery. And if you think about it, this is basically modern cataract surgery in a nutshell. Probably, I would say, arguably, the biggest kind of advance in cataract surgery was in 1949. Harold Ridley was from Britain, and what he noticed is that, as the story goes, that as patients came back and had pieces of canopy from the planes that they were in inside of the eye, they noticed that it was very inert, that it didn't cause inflammation and those kind of things. And he decided, I'm going to devise a way where I can take a lens, focus light where it belongs, 
And that way they can have the lens inside of the eye so they don't have to, very, have to have very thick glasses and those kind of things. And that was a huge milestone. Unfortunately, he did face ridicule for many years, including here in the U.S., but eventually he devised a pretty good lens. And uh, even as late as 1983, patients still had these lenses in their eyes. And this is a picture of one of, those, one of his first surgeries. And this is his lens right here. It was circular in nature and went directly inside the eye, right where the old lens was. So, okay, now we have a lens. Patients can see better, but the surgery was still large. Large incisions, large risk of the vitreous coming forward. So in 1967, Charles Kelman introduced phaco emulsification. So that technique basically is breaking up the lens into small pieces so that the incisions could be much smaller. And this is an example of his first phaco machine from 1967. There is these bottles on here. but uh, So he really, I would say, is the true father of phaco as we know it today. So, okay, thinking about things again. So we have a lens we can put inside the eye. The patient can see better. We have phaco emulsification. Wouldn't it be nice if we could make a small incision, but in order to make a small incision, the lens has to be small. You can't really make a tiny lens because that moves around. So what they really need to do is develop a foldable lens, and that was actually done in 1984, also here in the U.S., by Dr. Mazzocco. And then finally, the final kind of aspect of what we would consider modern cataract surgery is topical anesthesia. So the anesthesia, we still do some general anesthesia cases. We still do some retrobulbar cases. But lots of our cases nowadays are topical anesthesia where you actually just put medicine on top of the eye to numb up the eye, and that was developed in 1993 by Dr. Fishman. So, okay, where do we go from here? So some of the future directions for cataract surgery is, number one, the incisions keep getting smaller and smaller. Nowadays, standard is somewhere in the realm of 2.4 to 2.6 millimeter incisions. The incisions for cataract surgery are getting smaller and smaller. This is an example of a 1.8 millimeter incision. So the thought process is as the incisions get smaller, the anterior chamber, so where we work, is much more stable and there's less risk of complication. I think it's a little bit of diminishing returns because if it gets too small, it's kind of hard to work inside the incision. Probably the biggest area that I think needs development is the intraocular lenses. We've come a long way from no lenses. 1949, Harold Ridley gave us lenses, but I think there's still a lot to go, especially in the realms of actually being able to see up close as well as far. And here are some examples of those lenses, for those of you that are not ophthalmologists. A lot of work is being used in actually kind of thinking about how can we use a laser more effectively to break up the lens, to make the incisions, and all these things are done trying to get away to make the surgery even more safe. And I think when you think about it, just to tie it in with Dr. Allen, we have all these kind of technological advances as tools. I think the one thing to really understand is that pioneers like Dr. Allen, who are so good not only at teaching but so good with patients, he touched so many lives, hundreds if not thousands. So I just want to make sure that uh, I put in my kind of opinion. And I mean, the guy would come into a room, smile, and he would just warm up your heart. So he certainly will be, be missed. OK. So our next speaker is Dr. Andrew Libris. Dr. Andrew Libris is our chief of ophthalmology at the VA. And he is going to talk about some of the advances in regards to safety in cataract surgery.